Tori Boyd here in Lenexa, Kansas, and we are getting ready to do our last block for block party. So I wanted to give you a little bit more detail this time. So I'm going to take you right through the, uh, from the uh, pieces you cut out to putting it together. Okay, so following your cutting instructions, you're going to cut out from your background a large square that's going to be for your flying geese unit and then four squares that are gonna be in the um, four corners of the total block unit. Then from your dark fabric, and remember with our patterns, dark, where the way it's labeled, doesn't always mean it's the darker fabric. It's just the way we've labeled them. For some of the blocks it might be dark, but for others it's not always. So for the dark fabric, you're going to cut um, a large square that will be um, part of the flying geese in the smaller star here and then you have four squares that are going to be part of that flying geese unit and then these will go in the four corners of the smaller star block and then your medium fabric is going to be four squares that will be part of the flying geese unit here and then you have the center of the smaller unit so what you have is a star inside a star. When it's all put together, you won't see all these lines and it will look like it's just floating right in there. So on the back of your squares, as it instructs in the pattern, you'll draw a diagonal line on the flying geese units for the larger block and on the flying geese units for the smaller block, okay? So this one, I've laid the two squares on here. You've done this before in some of your other patterns but I just want to go over it again. So I've already laid that on there. I've sewn that, the thread matches, so you might not be able to see it in the camera. I'm gonna put my ruler on here and cut this. And then we will get this pressed. Then we'll take these two block units, put that right on there, and this one on here, and we're gonna sew on either side of the drawn line again. So now we're gonna cut this. We have two flying geese units there and two here. So I'm going to press these. Then we're going to square these up. I'm going to use my flying geese, ultimate flying geese ruler. I'm going to put my three by six inch white line right there on my seam line in the corner of that marking right there in the corner of the block unit. Turn that off. It's so nice to be able to trim some of that away to make a more perfect block. Okay, my lines come right to the corner there and they come right to the corner over there as well. So I will have four of those. Okay, so now we have all four of these trimmed up to a nice accurate uh, three by six, three and a half by six and a half flying geese. Now we're gonna repeat the same procedure with the um, smaller one. So I have like I told you, that was part of the flying geese. We have two smaller units that are the flying geese unit. Those are laid on, out on there, drew my line, sewed on either side of it, and uh, cut those apart. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to repeat that with the other units on here. And we're just making the same thing, only smaller. Okay, we're going to cut these again, repeating the whole thing. I we'll have four of these. And now I need to press them. I like to set my seams first before I press. It helps the, the cotton thread just kind of work its way into the fabric and then helping to create a flatter, smoother seam. And now I'm going to trim these up with my flying geese ruler again. And this is going to be the one and a half by three finished. So I'm going to put that on there. Lines match up perfectly. It's easier to see because it's a darker line this time. Just turn that around. Turn my ruler around. If you have the wing clipper, it works wonderfully too. Just keep using it. And if you don't have either ruler, uh, you can still use your Creative Grids ruler, something like this or this. Um, in some of my previous videos, I've shown how to do that. Okay, we have the, the four small flying geese. Okay, the, the green is the background to these star points units here. So um, this is also background. So I'm going to lay this out like this. I always lay my blocks out in front of me so I be sure to get them put together right. Like that and then, okay, and then that'll go in the center. So that's um, the small star. So I'm gonna put that together. I like to chain piece, so when I'm doing one block, this is how I will put it together. get them pressed. Okay, the instructions will tell you to press these units uh, towards the outside corners here so that you have less bulk with your star points and then this one will go towards the inside. Doesn't always work out that way but it does work well on this block. Right, now I'm going to sew the units together and if you feel more comfortable pinning feel free to what I like to do is just feel those uh, seams this one goes that direction this one goes that so the seams nest each other in there I'll keep my finger there to keep them uh, together and if I have a lot of trouble with that when I'm doing it then I'll just start pinning They came out very nice. And any 
case you always want your uh, edges to come out together at the end okay if I don't if I just leave it like that I'm going to come out it's going to be about an eighth of an inch long so I'm going to hold those together and I could pin them or just hold them well so that when I get to the end that this part gets eased in when I get to the end they'll come out even okay so go ahead and press these in one direction Okay, that's the center of the star, the, a star within a star. Typically when you make star blocks, you will have a plain square here, but this happens to be a star that goes in there. So the next one is going to look like There we go, I'll put it together. Notice how I use my finger there to hold that together so that it stays together well. Like I said, if you feel comfortable pinning to hold it, then do that. When you're working with white on whites, always check to make sure that you have the right side up. Sometimes it's really hard to tell which is the right side. seam didn't come out. I'm not happy with it, so I'm going to go back and complete that, make it just a little bit wider because it was a little too narrow there. Now we're going to press these. Now I'm going to set my seam, press those open, set my seam, press those. Not all the way open, just to the side. This one I will press, I want to press it, since these are pressed that way, I want to press this one in this way. finished and we're going to sew our last two seams here. Okay, I have my seams at the uh, end of the geese unit nested here. As I get here, I'm going to make sure that these are lined up together. And they came out just right. Line that up. Nest my seams. sure my ends are together here even way before I get to it and there's your block okay we're going to give it one final pressing and then you'll get to see how beautiful this block is when I made this for our block party quilt uh, it's the first time I'd ever made this block and I absolutely love it I'm using uh, this method of oversizing your cuts and having the uh, rulers to square them up helps gives you nice sharp points here and plenty of room out here for your seam allowance so that these aren't coming too close. If your triangle point comes way out here really close or right to your outside edge, it's probably because you made a, a too narrow of a seam allowance in here. Look at your seam allowance and go back and make it narrower if you need to, because making that, or make it wider, 
because doing that will give you more room there for your quarter inch seam allowance out there. And um, so what it does is gives the effect that this star is inside the star. When you get this put in your quilt and it's all quilted, you won't even notice these lines out here. It'll just look like it's floating right in there. Hope you enjoyed watching this and hope it was helpful. Be sure to watch for our three, for three more videos on the different finishing uh, instructions for the icebox cookies quilt, the apple crunch quilt, and the Waldorf cookies quilt. We'll have three uh, separate videos on putting the setting uh, kit. Just some tips um, is all it will be. Just a few hints to make it easier for you. Mm -hmm.